Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Obsessive Prep Raisy. Today I want to discuss how quickly and easily it would be for you as a prepper to store a bunch of food real quick for your family, nutritional with vitamins, and super easy to do if you have just a couple items. Now, as a prepper, I always suggest one of the items that you want to get is a dehydrator. That being said, you do not have to purchase an Excalibur that is a couple hundred dollars. You can always go to the Nesco dehydrators, things like that, that are a little bit more affordable. Now, if it's something where you plan on prepping a lot of food and dehydrating, then by all means, I would tell you to go out and purchase a nine tray dehydrator, Excalibur, something of that sort that is a square trace because it makes it so much easier to dehydrate. Normally your Nesco's are round. They stack from top to bottom and your blower is at the top of that unit. So what you end up having to do is when you're doing a lot of dehydrated food, what you have to do is completely shift the trays, move them around because that blower is only going from the top down. Whereas something like an Excalibur, these square units, your blower is in the back of the unit and so it's blowing across. Now on occasion when I've done a lot, I've had to shift my trays. That's when I'm really loading my dehydrator. And in these video clips that I'm gonna show you, I do have to shift because I'm doing 18 pounds of vegetables. And so you're gonna to have to shift and rotate even when you're doing that volume. But you're talking about 18 pounds of vegetables overnight, quickly, and they're shelf stable. Now, unfortunately, this video is gonna be a little choppy. I do a lot of like things on Instagram, and for whatever reason, my Instagram is not loading correctly. So these videos that I did that I'm gonna splice in here are for, they were originally intended for Instagram, but I wanted to show you how easily it would be to dehydrate your own vegetables. And I show you in this video a complete breakdown of nine packages, two pounds each of peas and corn, what it looks like in a container, what it looks like once it's dehydrated in those containers that I put in, and then what it breaks down to in the mason jars. So I, again, I apologize on this kind of choppy video, but I wanna kind of show you all of this. Okay, so we have 18 pounds of peas here, and I wanted to show you before I put it in the dehydrator that it would typically go into nine of these containers. And what I wanted to show is once they're dehydrated, I will show you how many of these containers these nine bags of peas will fit into. So we've got 18 pounds, going to get it in the dehydrator, and we'll get back with you. So I have all nine bags loaded into my Excalibur here. So to show you that easily 18 pounds can fit into the nine tray Excalibur. I'll set it 125 degrees for eight hours. Sometimes when you open it up, you may have to put it on for a little longer, but not much, an hour or two at best. So there we go. And tomorrow I'll show you the results. So I've got that. I'm going to get my lid on. I'm going to set it at 125 degrees for eight hours. Somebody's down here looking for peas. Who knew puppers liked peas? Daisy. <laughs> so if anything that makes good pupper food are you a green girl a little vegan our peas are all dehydrated wanted to give you a look at how they turn out when they're dehydrated they will literally snap and fall apart this is good it just takes a little while for them to get the moisture back into them when you're cooking so I always recommend not to cook with salt I put my peas in a bowl of water and microwave them and let them sit for about 10 minutes before I have to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and put these peas into the containers and next I will show you how many containers those 18 pounds of peas take up.
Okay, so our 18 pounds a piece fit into two and three quarters container. And if you remember in the previous videos, one two pound bag a piece fit into one of these containers. So in three days, I did mushrooms, 11 pounds of mushrooms, 18 pounds of corn, and 18 pounds of peas. Also in this video, if you keep watching, I show you what the peas rehydrate as, what they look like, and how easily it is to cook with your, your peas, your carrots, all of this dehydrated. Okay, so I got my peas in a third cup. Now these are peas that I dehydrated April of 2020. And a third cup, I just went ahead, I didn't measure the water out, but you're gonna at least need double of what that is. So a third a cup of peas, do a whole cup of water. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this in my microwave. And I'll put it on until the water boils. Now you can cook it in the microwave um, until they're done. What I will normally do is set them and let them just sit. Um, again, I'm gonna start it off at two minutes. Another thing, when you're cooking any kind of dehydrated vegetable, do not put salt into the water because that stops the rehydration of it for whatever reason, I have no idea. So don't put any salt in the water, just cook it in just plain water. Alrighty, so you can see that they're already starting to plump up at two minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on for another two minutes. Our peas are at four minutes in the microwave. And so you can see that they are starting to plump up. Some are taking their time. Now you can either start um, your dinner off before you start cooking, do your peas first, do a hot water and just let them steep. And then they will be ready to add in. Or if you're wanting them to cook, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in for another two minutes so you can see how much further it takes them and how much more plump they get. Okay, so they've cooked for six minutes and then I let them sit for about five minutes. And you can see they are all, for the most part, there might be a couple of them that are still working, but uh, definitely edible. And uh, if you put them in a soup or stew now and they have salt, there will be no issue with them plumping up anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and strain these and then I'll show you how much um, peas fit into a cup versus that third cup dry. Now remember, we started with a third cup peas, and then this is what the pea, peas rehydrated as, so almost three quarters of a cup peas. And uh, you know, something simple as just melting some butter, some garlic salt, and I love my Tony's, a little bit of spice, add those two, and a simple little side dish. I also get a lot of questions from people asking why don't you just put stuff in the freezers they don't they cannot put it in their mind why go the extra step of dehydrating and you've got to think always as a prepper of electricity will your electricity go out if your electricity goes out all your frozen all your meat everything is going to spoil so that's why i dehydrate also you want to think about water sources as a prepper and then how you're going to cook um, if you've watched any of my vid videos and followed me, I have solar um, solar cooker, solar sun oven, and also all sorts of means of water. So you've always have got to think about those kind of things in the back of your head if you're going to prep. But if you're not prepping and you just want to free up your freezer, get a dehydrator. And like I said, these are all plumped back up again. Works out great. I think you'll be happy. Idea, and you can see up here. I've got just some of my dehydrated stuff. Some uh, chives up there. Some green, uh, the peas, mixed vegetables, corn. Oh, I think I see cauliflower, my dried lemons, a little bit of everything. Now, a lot of people out there, once I do a dehydrated video, I get hit with why don't I freeze dry? It's never been something that I've looked into. Um, I carry a lot of number 10 cans that I purchased over the years of freeze dry, but the expense of buying a freeze dryer at $1,800 plus, to me, it's more affordable for me just to dehydrate my food. And there's only a certain amount of stuff that I dehydrate that I ever plan on dehydrating. I never plan on cooking a spaghetti meal and wanting to save that and use a freeze dry 
freeze dryer. So the people that are out there that use a freeze dryer, by all means, that works for them. It's just not something that I do. And I will always push more affordable ways to make shelf sustainable foods for you that is just more affordable for a family. And when I discuss easily shelf stable food, I'm talking about 54 pounds of food that I dehydrated that I, it only took four days for me to dehydrate. It was bottom line, 18 pounds of corn, 18 pounds of peas, 11 and a half pounds of mushrooms, and four and a half pounds of jerky, flank steak. And that's what I've got in my dehydrator right now. Now by having that, you're looking at approximately 261 servings. That is a lot that is shelf stable. For four people, it's 65 servings each and approximately two times a day. So the serving size, you're looking at give or take 32 servings. I've got my little cheat sheet over here. But to give you an idea of you know, having 32 servings for four people that, you know, now when you dehydrate, you have to think about storing water. And as a prepper, that's number one concern of water source, water supply. Now, also the controversy on freeze dried versus dehydrating is freeze dried doesn't take as much water. When you dehydrate, you have to have a water source because it is going to take that amount of water to rehydrate your To show product. you, I've got nine packages of the two-pound corn here. And like I did with the peas and the uh, mushrooms, I like to show you what that two pounds fits into the container. And then once it's done dehydrating, I will show you what it looks like and what it actually fits into. So again, with the 18 pounds of corn, it is the same routine as the peas. You're going to dehydrate for approximately eight to 10 hours at 125 degrees. After your corn or your vegetables have dehydrated, you want to let them sit out room temperature for about 24 hours. That way you're ensured that the moisture is mixed throughout the vegetables if there's any left. In my one clip of the nine packages of corn, I show you the nine packages and then also in the containers, the bags, one two pound bag would fit into one of these containers. After being dehydrated, you're looking, this is our 18 pounds of corn. Now again, I get conflicts from people that leave messages, you want to do organic, you want to do that. When you're prepping, you prep for your family and your needs. If you are keto, if you are organic, GMO, you prep for you. I'm not telling you how and what products to use. I'm only giving you guidelines to try to show you. So if you're strictly organic, go out and spend the extra money and purchase the organic and dehydrate it. That is your personal choice. And as preppers, we... I, the one thing I stress so much is that you need to do what your family is going to eat and what is essential to you. The only thing I have to say is when you're prepping like this and you're looking for a scenario where you have no food, it is possibly an SHTF situation, you know, a doomsday scenario where you are just thankful to have food, you're not going to care if it's keto. I mean, you're going to care because it's your body, but you're going to be thankful you have the food. And so, you know, organic, non-GMO, that kind of thing, it, yes, it works out and it's great, but you're not going to care because all you're going to care about is feeding yourself and feeding your family. So this all breaks down to what you can afford and what is best for your family. I'm not telling you again, I'm going to repeat myself, I'm not going to tell you the foods that you need to do. I'm just going to show you how it breaks down and the easiest way to prep and store your food. So I've got these two containers here of my corn and I wanted to show you on the other video, if you watch after this, let me get this in here. So all I do is I fill up my jars and then what I will do is I will take them, I will use my lid over here 
And as a prepper, I said a dehydrator, but another thing that I think every prepper should have is some kind of food saver. A lot of people have asked me what food saver I have. Mine's a dinosaur. It is so old, you're not going to find it. Any of the newer food savers work great. And what you do is you have this lid attachment. Now, there is issues with the smaller mason jar lid attachment not always sucking the air out so i tell people to wiggle it around until you know you're getting that suction the wide mouth i've never had issues with so you put this on here then you push the canister and you vacuum and seal it well not the vacuum and seal you're doing the canister so whoop get my lid down here and this is going to suck the oxygen out so that makes your food shelf stable oxygen free you do not need to use a silica packet uh, an oxygen absorber and it's shelf stable for 20 25 even longer shelf life now talking about longer shelf food that is dehydrated or beans the longer you store your product, the more water it is going to take to reconstitute. So I watched a video on TikTok where the, all these new preppers are popping up saying, after five years, your beans are so hard, you can't use them. That is a story. They have no clue about prepping. It, what you're going to need to do is take that water and you're going to need to soak those beans before you cook them. A good overnight because the longer your product stores, the less water and it's going to need more water to reconstitute, rehydrate. So I'm going to get back over here. So we've got this. Oxygen's removed and my lid it's not coming off and it is shelf stable so i always recommend a dehydrator and a vacuum sealer that has those lid attachments your 18 pounds of corn actually fit into four wide mouth mason jars so 18 pounds of corn fits into four mason jars wide mouth quart size your peas 18 pounds fit into five quart wide mouths and then those 11 half pounds of mushrooms fit into four mason jars. There's all of this. Again, I apologize for the clips into the video. I wanted to be able to show you how to dehydrate. And if you still want to see more of my products that I'm dehydrating, keep watching to the end. The next thing I'm going to do is 18 pounds of mixed vegetables. And uh, oh, I wanted to show you this here also. What I do is I purchase flank steaks. I keep it rolled up and I slice it and I slice it thin and then they come out a little wide and what I do is I take scissors and I cut them into strips. Um, there's a video here showing you before when I've seasoned my uh, flank steak and I do have some videos out on beef jerky and so simple to do four and a half pounds. Now this will have a shelf life you can get if you store it correctly in a freezer for approximately a year. If not on the shelf, I'm gonna say max three or four months. Some people have gotten longer and it depends on the fats in your meats. I personally love flank steak for beef jerky. Um, it's not so affordable to make anymore because the cost of the meat has gone through the roof, but definitely a nice item to have for preps also. And I have my four and a half pounds of my beef jerky out of my dehydrator. And this is approximately, so one pound is 16 ounces. After it dehydrates, it's approximately 12 ounces per pound. So I have four pounds, give or take four and a half pounds. So that breaks down to each person gets a four ounce serving. We're looking at 32 servings if you do a four ounce serving of beef jerky. But uh, if you're anything like my family, we love beef jerky. Might be a little less, not 32 servings, but 16 servings. But uh, a great way to get some meat, put it in the freezer in a food saver bag or an airtight container. You can definitely get a longer time going to leave that here. I'm going to do another video that I've got back here. I'll flip the camera around after this and show you what I've got. And I'm going to do another video of what I purchased this last two weeks that I'm putting back into my preps. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too quick. I don't want to waste your time. I talk a lot, but I try to 
put a lot of information in a short period of time. If you like the video, please subscribe. And if you want to be notified for future videos, ring the bell. Have a blessed day. So those 11 pounds of mushrooms fit into my nine tray dehydrator. It's the Excalibur dehydrator. I'm going to set my temperature to 125 degrees and I'm cooking them for approximately seven hours. Maybe longer because these were store-bought mushrooms and they are pretty thick. So it could take a little longer. Get that in there and then you set your temperature to 125. And then we're going to go for, yeah, I'm going to put it at eight hours. So my nine trays of my mushrooms are dry. I wanted to show you what, I wa what you want them to sound like. So you want them completely dried out where they will crumble and fall apart. And that's how you know they're done. So here's a look at our nine packages of mushrooms. So those nine packages dehydrated go into two of the packages. So that is a lot of water weight. So after this cools, I'm gonna let them cool in a bowl for 24 hours, and then I will put them in mason jars. When you dehydrate, you don't ever want to put your stuff, your, your food into mason jars and seal it until they've sat at least 24 hours so the moisture can get in the air and uh, redistributes in the product. But I wanted to show this to you because I thought it was very interesting to show to you the difference dehydrated mix and the volume and space that it takes up.